good morning everyone i thank kcsi for giving me the opportunity to deliver this prestigious dr ss nathan evolution 2020 there has been a paradigm shift from eminence based surgery to evidence based surgery as the medicine has been progressing by leaps and bounds we have various articles published in journals and to analyze the general articles and claims of superiority of a treatment of procedure we must know the basics of scientific uh, the research methodology and we need scientific temperament to analyze them properly i'll give you an example i was attending one of the kcc cons and an expert was talking about the laparoscopic ventral hernia repair he said polypropylene mesh should never be used for intraperitoneal placement i asked him whether it is uh, his personal preference or is it uh, evidence based the expert answered you must always use a dual mesh or uh, this composite mesh because the risk of complications are there with the polypropylene mesh yeah that i call eminence based medicine everybody was silent probably they agreed that uh, your mesh should be used always but is it the right way look at this data i have a table for the complications of polypropylene mesh placed intraperitoneally looking at the bottom line you think what he said may be reasonable but there is another table look at this table it has got even more number and more number of articles and if you look at the bottom line your meshes also have got the complications compare the results of these two you get this table and uh, if you apply tests of significance there is no statistically significant difference between the two measures as far in, in the incidence of complications except for additions here i wish to stress you should not stop at the number you need how to appraise a journal article critically you go back and read that article about this additions If you read the additions were diagnosed by ultrasound examination, which is not a standard way to assess the intraabdominal additions, and these additions were not clinically significant, except in one patient in each group who required real laparotomy. That means the incidence is equal in both the groups. This, this is based on a meta-analysis which was published in Indian Journal of Surgery, and the author's conclusion there was. the complications what we call the like adhesions field friction fistulization etc it of polypropylene mesh can occur with equal incidence with newer meshes also therefore the choice of mesh depends on the surgeon's preference and cost of the mesh rather than evidence based this is evidence based medicine not all studies or uh, types of studies have got the equal strength if you arrange them in the order of um, strength in an ascending order you get a table something like this please note here expert opinion stands at the bottom it doesn't have much value why because one example i just gave you now the other example i can tell you has stayed with me and there were many experts like this in previously now nobody is doing has to operation or basin is hernia repair you know because we have a data to today to say that there are better procedures with lesser complications and better results and how do we get this data it is from studies clinical trials even anecdotal case reports also do not have much value because they are good for knowledge sake and they are interesting but they do not help for future case management that's why its value is less for example you look at this baby it is delivered by cesarean section at 32 weeks it was an ovarian pregnancy and the baby was alive but reading this article if you try to manage the next case of ovarian pregnancy till 32 weeks you will end up with soup at the top most of this uh, table you have systematic review and meta analysis this is because they are the summary conclusions of a number of randomized controlled trials published elsewhere in the literature they collect the information data from this randomized control trial reanalyze it and then give conclusion so its value is highest the research has been stressed by this great man dr c 
ಸೆಲಬಣ್ಣ ಸೆಲಬಪ್ಪ ನರ್ಸಣಗಿ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ನರ್ಸಣಗಿ ಈ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ವೇ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀಸ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎವಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನ್ ದೇ ವರ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಥಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ವೇ ಟು ಪೇ ಅಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಈಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ scientific temperament research and research and in 1970 only he has published so many articles and he led by himself being an example he strongly advocated to practice evidence based surgery and publish besides he was a great teacher too his contributions to esi were tremendous he was a founder fellow of esi he was the first from karnataka to be president of president of esi in 1993 he was also active in international college of surgery he was a member of editorial board of uh, ics and he was honored with uh, honorary fellowship of uh, royal college of surgeons edinburgh he was a uh, rajas award also he was a legend in his lifetime he was felicitated by dr apj the then president in 2004 not much information is available about his early childhood he hails from a remote village in bijapura district in early childhood he lost both his parents and uh, he had utter poverty and great hardship to continue his study in spite of that with great determination and perseverance he continued his study and went on to take a postgraduate degree in general surgery from bombay in 1962 later on advice of one of his teacher he came back to karnataka settled down in gulbarga joined uh, the amar medical college and he rose to the position of head of the department of surgery there later he shifted to bijapura became director of bld uh, medical college he left us for heavenly abode in 2016 a full article was published in indian journal of surgery about this great personality as a tribute it is customary to say rip rest in peace i would say RIP please return if possible to guide us to guide us into research why he was stressing so much on the research why it is important for indian surgeons please note that the research activity in india is not up to the mark i will give you few data about this say icmr is a apex body for medical research in india it can it is constituted by 32 premier institutes institutes of national importance in 100 years between 1990 and 2010 it has produced 12 and a half thousand papers an average of about 125 papers per year just to give comparison how a good institute can be mayo institute produces more than 4600 papers per annum barring a few premier institutes like ems new delhi research activity in most of the medical colleges in india has been poor according to this uh, article india only 10% of medical colleges are active in research and more than 57% of the medical college do not did not produce even a single paper between 2005 and 2015 good 10 year period the impression is that the research activity in india is far below the desired level The next two slides were shared with me by Dr. Lakshman. One of his students did a study on uh, what are the number of uh, articles authored by Indian surgeons working in India. Indian surgeons working outside India are excluded. What he did, he selected top 10 surgical journals and last five years of publications. He looked at what are the total number of public- publications and out of them, how many were authored by Indian surgeons working in India. This is the top four results. There were none in uh, JAMA surgery, one each in uh, annals of surgery and BJS out of more than 1000 articles, slightly better with uh, World Journal of Surgery, 27 articles out of more than 2000 articles. Even if you consider the flagship journal of Indian surgery, that is Indian Journal of Surgery, only 53% of the articles were contributed by Indian authors. So far I was talking about the quantity. What about the quality? Again, we shall have a few data. ICMR in 2015 applied for 33 patents 
and only two were granted. The situation in 2016 was even dismal, only one patent. For this, the total amount spent was more than 100,000 crores. Just to show how a good institute could be, Mayo's clinic holds uh, more than 200,000 patents. A single clinic holds more than 200,000 patents. This webpage depicts the sorry state of affairs of uh, medical research in India. Probably you cannot read from there. I will read it out for you. With more than 800 scientists working across 32 institutes in the country, it cannot even enlist a single new invention in terms of a new drug, new vaccine, diagnostic test, or a treatment procedure developed by hundreds of scientists over a period of about two years. ICMR could not even enlist a single practical application of its hundreds of research paper which was published. If you take the impact factor of our Indian Journal of Surgery, see the impact factor of a journal is a quality indicator of the journal. The impact factor of our favorite Indian Journal of Surgery has been deteriorating after 2016 and it has been delisted from PubMed. That means you cannot find any article published in Indian Journal of Surgery after 2018 in PubMed Center. What is this impact factor? It is the number of articles cited by other journals divided by total number of articles published in that particular period. If you look at this graph, you can see it is deteriorating after 2016. The number of articles cited is only a small fraction of total number of articles published for Indian General of Surgery. Presently, the impact factor is 0.55. Just to have comparison, what a good impact factor. JAMA Surgery has impact factor of 8.5. Paradoxically, Indian scientists are doing very well outside India and even Indian scientists within India also they are doing well in other fields like this Vyom Mitra, they have produced a humanoid for space. And we think India is not an ideal country to undertake clinical trials, but look at this article in Lancet. India is a very ideal country to undertake clinical trials. It considers because it costs less here compared to developed countries. The English-speaking healthcare staff along with the very good information management system, we can meet international standards. Also, the population is large, heterogeneous, and with wide variety of diseases. It makes the country an ideal for clinical trials. We Indians are not utilizing it properly, but Westerners are utilizing it optimally. At least one happy news, BMC has become a part of one of the largest studies which is costing more than 30 crores but again it is in collaboration with the western college obviously we cannot allow the present state to continue if we have to stand at par with our counterparts elsewhere what are the problems why is this sort of situation if you look at the roadblocks probably number one which is quoted always is limited resources the funds allocated for research activity in our medical college is very less. But we must also realize that if we don't know how to utilize this, any amount of resource will be insufficient. All he needs is a single ladder, but he has plenty of them. Still, he is struggling. And even when the resources are available, they are protected so well that they are of no use. The staff of our medical college, they are overburdened with the routine patient care and uh, the human resource available for them is also less comparatively and by the end of the day little time or energy is left to think about any serious research. Also the strong hierarchical authoritative setup in our medical colleges, they discourage the enthusiasm of young and capable faculty who wish to go beyond the routine healthcare. But we must also realize there are problems with the staff also. They don't have the research concepts. They are not adequately trained in research methodologies during their PG days, so they cannot teach the PGs now. This becomes a problem. They are reluctant to learn the statistics and uh, research methodologies, and they are heavily dependent on uh, statisticians. If you learn basics of medical statistics, you 
it will help for pages during their presentation and for teachers while teaching the students or undertaking their own research. There is nothing wrong in uh, take, approaching medical statistician or taking help with them. But if you approach them with some knowledge, you will get better output and at least you will be able to assess whether whatever he is telling is right or wrong. When you know the problems, the solution should follow automatically. Although I enlisted so many reasons for push that, I think the main block is the mindset. If you have proper attitude, you can do these projects. You will agree with me that the clinical projects what we are conducting in our uh, in medical colleges, they do not cost much and publications can be achieved with very little expenditure. Another thing is these medical research and innovations, they, are, they should not be limited to clinical research alone. They should be a bionic convergence. What is this? There are tremendous research activity in other fields, be it uh, chemistry, physics, electronics, or nanotechnology, whatever. And these with should converge biology and the other fields. They should come together in the bionic convergence to bring out useful technologies which will be applicable in clinical sciences. For example, the CT scan, MRI, PET scan, nuclear medicine, all these are the results of such bionic convergence only. There should be a strong link between the basic and uh, clinical sciences. All leading institutes in the world, they have developed this strong link, but this is very really poor in India. For example, MIT, this is the number one technological institute in the world. It has collaboration with the MGH, Massachusetts General Hospital, and together they have brought out an interesting technology, fluorescence imaging system, with which they were able to find out tumors as small as 0.3 millimeters, and they were able to access them in an experimental procedure, so it will get converted to clinical application. And why this is poor in India, this is one of the reasons. This is the fate of uh, science students after second PUC, they will choose one of these tracks and once they choose, they go parallel, never meet again in future. Even ASI has recognized this research in its uh, mission 2019-21. The areas it has covered is research orientation, publications and presentations. I don't know what ASI did to realize its mission, but KSE ASI took it seriously. It was initiated at Ballari by Dr. Arvind Patel. We formed a team with Dr. Lakshman as uh, course director, myself, Dr. Sophie Mutt, and a few other staff from the medical college where it has been held. And we started conducting workshop on evidence-based surgery and research methodologies. We already have done three such workshops, Wims Ballari, BMC, and our medical college, Bangalore. And another three are already planned for next one year, and I hope it keeps going. That is the brochure and these are the topics we cover in our uh, workshop starting from why should surgeon know about the research, what is evidence based surgery, how one can look for evidence in the internet means the literature search and basics of medical statistics, how does one critically appraise a journal paper, how to conduct a journal club, what is research, what is audit, what is the difference between them how to put together a research protocol and how to design a study. The end result of this logically will be presenting a paper in the conference or writing to a journal. We also gave the participants uh, hands-on experience on literature search and analyzing the papers in journal club and writing a research protocol. Our participants included not only PGs but uh, enthusiastic staff also. During this process, we also learned something. We asked the participant to rate us. These are the criteria, subject matter, content, slide design, presentation quality, question and answer. And we asked them to grade us between 1 to 5, 1 being the lowest, 5 being the highest. And for, for example, if you take the content, this is the feedback we get. We got. You can see majority of the pie chart shows only blue and red. That means excellent to very good, except for uh, this journal club. I don't know why it was graded low. And we got more than 95% of the participants graded as 
with excellent or very like that i have another 60 pie charts for different criteria different modules i cannot tell about uh, all those things for want of time during these courses there were uh, suggestions also from the participants they suggested us we should conduct such uh, workshops early in the phase of their pg days and it should be done on a regular basis few pgs lamented that they should have been exposed for uh, this types of workshop before they could submit their synopsis probably they would have done better that's what they thought and some asked us to conduct for uh, two days with more time for hands on uh, more stress on the medical statistics and more examples of uh, medical statistics when we asked whether they are interested in attending a separate pro separate session on medical statistics a good 96 percent of them said yes and when we asked whether they would like to have this, this type of program regularly every year good more than 95 91 percent of uh, participants they said yes we want this to be a sustained ongoing effort and we wish to do regularly twice a year in every training institute any faculty from any medical college if they want to conduct similar workshop they can utilize our services or they can conduct themselves by utilizing our material all the slides and uh, the videos of our workshop is are uploaded in the website and cloud i will give you the link a little later and they can use it free of cost without infringement of uh, intellectual property rights our only goal is the widespread dissemination of the knowledge of uh, research methodologies with this um, experience we also came out with a book on the research methodology which was raised during the inauguration in this conference and it is a free copy is distributed to all the delegates an electronic version of the book is also available in my website www.lakshmi.nh.in and um, on cloud also dr lakshman has put it in the cloud for free download you can visit this website or this cloud you can download them freely also all the videos and ppts of this presentation of uh, workshop they are also available in my website you can visit here click over there you get this um, all ppts you can download freely and use in your institute to conduct your own workshop this is what i have done my bit for spreading this research methodology uh, awareness i have given a few guest lectures at uh, national and state conferences i also convened a symposium in one of the ksac con at right here in 2013 and i wrote a book on medical statistics for beginner which was published by Springer. i also published some 11 articles in various journals which were quoted more than 30 times that means significant i feel all these things i am telling not to boast myself but to impress upon you that sitting in a small place like badravati being in private i could do this much and i sincerely believe that each and every one of you can do much better than me with much better facility with you and i hope someone will undertake this finally a word of caution we know about the rules and regulations and raw laws of uh, participating in the clinical trial if you do not know and commit mistake knowingly or unknowingly intentionally or unintentionally you definitely land up in something with this i want to suggest uh, ksasi to start its own journal ksasi journal of surgery for the benefit of its members see our members may find it difficult to publish in ijs because there is a limited space available and opportunities are less comparatively so we can start our own journal if you convert each and every presentation here and posters here you convert them into articles you will have enough material for one whole year ladies and gentlemen research is uh, something like uh, paving a new road where there are none and one has to take lead and once you decide connect with other people take help from others it's a teamwork and once you decide don't waste time move fast have good attitude about it and definitely you will succeed that's how you set an example for others to follow 
I have come to the last part. I feel there are only two rules for a researcher. Rule number one, he should have proper mindset. Rule number two, can you guess what it is? He should not forget rule number one. That's all. That means only mindset, proper mindset is required. Set your mind on research. Your body will automatically follow. Thank you. I thank once again KSASI for giving me the opportunity to deliver this oration and I thank one and all for patience.